This video includes a paid sponsorship from Span, but more on that later. While Ford does have three very compelling EVs on the market right now, the Mustang Mach-E, the Ford F-150 Lightning, and the E-Transit Van, Ford's EV business unit that they have called Model E is not profitable, which means that their business is currently relying on profits from their internal combustion engine vehicle business. Thankfully though, Ford is making some very drastic and needed changes uh, to their EV business in order to get this unit profitable and to better compete with the likes of Tesla. But the question really is, will these changes be enough? And will Ford's next generation of electric vehicles, which are supposed to be more profitable, be able to compete with what Tesla will offer in the future, or will Ford be left behind? Let's examine some comments from Ford's CEO, Jim Farley, about where Ford is planning to go in the future when it comes to EVs. And let's compare that to where Tesla is today and what Tesla has planned for the future. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. There's no turning back and EVs are here to stay. And those automakers who don't take this seriously will be in for some serious trouble very soon. Thankfully though, Ford is taking this seriously. However, they have a lot of work to do. For instance, back in February of last year, as was reported by this Associated Press article, Ford CEO Jim Farley admitted in an interview that, quote, it, referring to Ford, doesn't have the expertise to transition to battery electric vehicles. With this realization in mind, Jim Farley and the Ford team have been working very hard in recent past to really transform their business and make it more profitable, especially when it comes to the e EV side, and Jim Farley had a lot to say about this in their most recent Q4 2022 Investors Conference call, and I want to highlight some of the things that Jim had to say. The first comments that I want to highlight have to do with how many EVs Ford hopes to be able to manufacture in the near future. During that investor's call, Jim Farley said, quote, we remain on track to reach our annualized EV production capacity of 50,000 units per month or 600,000 units globally by the end of this year. For reference, in the fourth quarter, our run rate of production was more like 12,000. So with these comments from Jim, you can see that Ford is working very hard to rapidly grow their EV business and going from 12,000 units per month um, in the fourth quarter of 2022 and by the end of 2023 to be producing 50,000 EVs per month, at least have that much volume when it comes to manufacturing capacity. That's a big jump and being able to produce uh, somewhere close to 600,000 units per year would be a big jump for Ford. Now, I do want to step back and just look at what Tesla is doing and compare that to what Ford has done so far. And then we'll talk about more uh, further in the future goals from Ford uh, from Jim Farley. So if you look at the USA market only, for instance, and you look at how many battery electric vehicles that Tesla has sold in this market versus Ford, you can see there that in Q4 of 2022, Ford only delivered 6% as many vehicles as Tesla in the United States. In Q2, Ford delivered 12% as many vehicles. And in Q3, Ford delivered 14% as many vehicles as Tesla. When it comes to the global scale, um, in the full year of 2022, Tesla delivered over 1.3 million vehicles. When it comes to Ford, we know they delivered over 61,000 EVs in the United States in 2022. And when it comes to battery electric vehicle deliveries in China and Europe, we don't have exact numbers for those markets, but we do have some good sources which get us pretty close. So based on my research and based on what I could find, I estimate that Ford globally delivered between 90 and 91,000 battery electric vehicles in 2022. So as you can see right now, Tesla is far ahead of Ford, but Jim had some things to say about Ford's EV future goals. And I'd like to dive into those comments, but before we actually go into those, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of today's video. Thanks to Span for sponsoring this video. If you are thinking about installing a solar and a battery backup system, or if you currently have such a system, you definitely need to check out SPAN. Unlike traditional electrical panels, the SPAN Smart Panel allows you to monitor and track your energy usage and solar generation remotely through an easy to use iOS or Android app. Also, when combined with a battery backup system like a Tesla Powerwall, it can help you extend your battery backup time by somewhere around 40% on average. 
Find out more and get a quote at span.io or click the link in the video description. And if you do fill out that form to get a quote, make sure that you put cleaner watt in the comments section so Span knows that I sent you. Okay, moving back to that investors conference call and the comments that Jim Farley made about Ford's future EV goals. In addition to Ford being on track to reach their uh, EV production capacity of 50,000 units per month by the end of this year that I just referenced, Jim Farley also said, quote, and we are on plan for that 2 million units of incremental capacity by the end of 2026. So whereas Ford is aiming to have a production capacity of around 2 million units by the end of 2026, uh, Tesla currently right now in their most recent conference call, they are aiming right now for at least delivering in 2023, 1.8 million vehicles for the year. If Tesla has a really good year, um, as Elon Musk mentioned in the conference call, they could even hit somewhere close to 2 million vehicles delivered this year. But let's just stick with that 1.8 number for a minute. And if you remember in the past, Tesla has recently guided for a roughly 50% year over year growth for the foreseeable future when it comes to deliveries. So if Tesla does indeed deliver 1.8 million vehicles in 2023 and they grow by 50% the next year, that would go to 2.7 million. If it grows another 50%, 4.05 million. And if it grows another 50%, Tesla could deliver over 6 million vehicles in 2026. Based on Jim Farley's comments and how fast they are growing right now, I believe it's very possible they could deliver somewhere around 300,000 electric vehicles in 2023. They could get up to 600,000 vehicles in 2024. And I believe that number could reach somewhere around 1.5 million by the end of 2026. And I believe it's very possible in 2026 or somewhere around there, they could deliver around 1.5 million vehicles. Now, obviously these are both just projections from each of these companies. However, Tesla is starting with a much higher number. For instance, as I mentioned, Tesla's goal of delivering 1.8 million vehicles at least this year in 2023, that number is already somewhere around three or four years ahead of a best case scenario for Ford. Another really important topic that Jim brought up in this call had to do with uh, Ford's plans for battery manufacturing in the future. Of course, both Tesla and Ford, if they're going to grow their EV volumes, they need a lot of batteries. So here's what Jim had to say about Ford's plans for battery manufacturing. Now to deliver this incredible growth as we speak throughout facilities in North America, we're adding shifts, expanding our facilities, building out new battery capacity and assembly capacity. Construction is in full swing in Tennessee and Kentucky on our Blue Oval City and our three Blue Oval SK battery plants. Now notice that Jim mentioned three Blue Oval SK battery factories. In case you're not aware, um, SK Innovation and Ford have partnered together in a joint uh, venture partnership and they're building right now three different battery factories. Um, there'll be two in Kentucky. Each of those will have a capacity when fully ramped up of around 43 gigawatt hours per year. And their factory in Tennessee should also have a capacity of around 43 gigawatt hours per year. In addition to their US factories, Ford will likely be building a 30 to 45 gigawatt hour per year battery factory in Turkey as well. But from what we have right now, when these factories are fully ramped up, which will still be a few years from now, Ford should have installed capacity from these factories of around 129 gigawatt hours per year. When it comes to Tesla and their future growth, a lot of that depends on their 4680 battery format. Now, Tesla is buying quite a few batteries from suppliers right now, and Panasonic does manufacture a large number of 2170 batteries, over 37 gigawatt hours worth of 2170 batteries at their Gigafactory in Nevada. But nonetheless, Tesla is working to build out their own 4680 battery manufacturing capacity. For instance, Tesla recently announced they're going to build out a 100 gigawatt hour per year uh, 4680 battery factory at Gigafactory Nevada. At their Gigafactory in Texas, Tesla is working to install capacity of up to 100 gigawatt hours per year initially. And their pilot facility in Fremont, when fully ramped up, has a design capacity of around 10 gigawatt hours per year. So when you add up Tesla's current goals and what we know about right now, plus the Panasonic 2170 batteries that are produced at Gigafactory Nevada, that should give Tesla an annual capacity of around 247 gigawatt hours of batteries per year um, when these factories are fully ramped up. However, when it comes to Tesla's numbers, these numbers I just mentioned are really just the beginning because at the Gigafactory Nevada factory expansion announcement event, Elon Musk also mentioned that, quote, I think long term we may do as much as 500 gigawatt hours. 
In addition, in Tesla's Q3 2022 conference call, Elon Musk made it very clear that in the United States alone, Tesla hopes to be uh, manufacturing 1,000 gigawatt hours of batteries per year. And this would make up roughly one third of Tesla's future goal of producing three terawatt hours of batteries by 2030. To be clear, these numbers do not include batteries that Ford and Tesla purchased from outside suppliers. This is just dedicated battery supply. Now, moving on, Ford CEO Jim also in their conference call had some things to say about uh, the future EVs that we can expect from Ford. He said, quote, now we are deep in the development of our second generation EVs, including our next generation electric full size pickup, which, by the way, is awesome. These EVs will be fully software updatable. That means a brand new electric architecture, and they're going to be radically simplified. And that means higher customer sat better quality, lower bill of material, and lower manufacturing costs. Now, I will cover that comment about lowering manufacturing costs for Ford's EVs, because I believe that's really important. But since we're on the topic right now of future EVs, I just want to briefly highlight some of what we know about Ford's future EV plans, compare that to Tesla, and then also do a really brief comparison between the Mustang Mach-E and the Model Y to give us a little bit of idea where Ford is today and where they hope to go in the future and how that's going to compare to Tesla. We do know that Tesla is working on some future EV projects, some that we somewhat know about and some that we do not know about, as Elon Musk did hint at a little bit of that in the Q4 2022 investors conference call. However, we do know that Tesla is working on a compact, more affordable Tesla that is often called the $25,000 Tesla. We also know that Tesla right now is building out the production uh, capacity needed to build the Cybertruck, which should be in production sometime later this year. And I believe when you add this to their existing lineup, those two vehicles are their most impactful future vehicles. And I believe those two vehicles could do some extremely high volumes. When it comes to Ford's future, of course, Jim Farley mentioned a little bit about their second generation full-size pickup truck, which would be the second generation of the Ford F-150 Lightning. Um, that's going to be exciting to see what that entails. Um, and I don't know exactly what Ford has planned for the U.S. market, but last year Ford did release this particular graphic talking about their plans for Europe. And you can see that they actually have plans for nine all-electric vehicles in Europe by 2024. Okay, now when it comes to manufacturing efficiencies, Ford's first generation of EVs, while they are pretty compelling, as I mentioned earlier, and I do like the Mustang Mach-E and the Ford F-150, and the E-Transit van is a very good product. Nonetheless, Ford has learned some lessons from their first generation of EVs, and their next generation of EVs should be more efficient and um, should be able to have smaller battery packs, etc. Here are some of the comments that Jim Farley mentioned um, about what they learned from their first generation EVs. When we designed these first three products, we didn't know that our wiring harness for Mach-E was 1.6 kilometers longer than it needed to be. We didn't know it's 70 pounds heavier, and that's worth $300 of battery. We didn't know that we underinvested in braking technology to save on the battery size. We didn't know that we needed the world's best aerodynamicist to get the size of the battery smaller. And so now we have learned a lot and that second cycle of the product is in the factory right now being developed with a lot of new talent. I'm really glad to see that Ford is learning and that their next generation of EVs should be much more efficient. And this is of course something that Tesla has mastered. For instance, when you compare the Tesla Model Y to the Mustang Mach-E when it comes to efficiency, according to fueleconomy.gov, you can see just how much more efficient the Model Y really is. The Mustang Mach-E, for instance, California Route 1 all-wheel drive edition with a 91 kilowatt hour battery gets an EPA rated range of 312 miles, whereas a long range all-wheel drive Model Y with 19 inch wheels with an 82 kilowatt hour battery, it's able to achieve 330 miles of EPA rated range. When it comes to how many kilowatt hours of battery capacity are needed to travel 100 miles, you can see that the Model Y when it comes to the long range all wheel drive version versus the California Route 1 all wheel drive version, that vehicle is 18% more efficient. And when it comes to the performance variance, the Model Y is 27% more efficient than the Mach-E GT performance. So while the Mustang Mach-E is a great vehicle in many ways, it's nowhere near as efficient as the Model Y. And in the future, when Ford is able to have more efficient vehicles because they're going to focus more on aerodynamics, reducing weight, et cetera, this is going to allow them to have smaller battery sizes, as Jim talked about once again in the conference call. 
Okay, now I wanna move over to a really crucial and really important topic, and that's profitability. On this topic, Jim Farley during that conference call said, quote, when we start reporting according to these new segments in the first quarter, we're going to have complete visibility in the Model E's margin trajectory and understand the key levers to achieve our Model E EBIT target of 8%. Of course, when Jim Farley mentions Model E, he's talking not about a vehicle, but about their uh, separate EV business segment. And when he mentions an 8% EBIT, that means earnings before interest and taxes. So they're aiming to be profitable in their EV space. Now, if you look at Ford's most recent profitability from their Q4 2022 investors presentation, you can see that in the fourth quarter of 2022, their EBIT margin percentage was 5.8% and their gap net income percentage was 2.9%. For the full year of 2022, they actually had a gap loss of 1.3% and an adjusted EBIT margin percentage of a positive 6.6%. When you compare this to Tesla, in the full year of 2022, according to their Q4 2022 investors update letter, they were able to post a profit of 16.8% as a business. In addition, all of Ford's profit right now comes from their internal combustion engine vehicle business because as was recently confirmed by a Ford representative and was reported in this Drive Tesla Canada article, Ford's chief customer officer, the chief customer officer of Ford Model E mentioned, quote, we are not profitable at this moment. We've committed to being profitable in 26. We're currently on the plan. Ford as a whole is profitable and throwing off cash that enables us to make that investment. Of course, Ford getting their EV business segment profitable is really crucial for their success in the future because the internal combustion engine vehicle business, while that is producing some cash for them right now, um, that is going to fade in coming years as the market moves more and more towards EVs. And Ford knows this. And thankfully, and hopefully they'll be able to do this, but hopefully by 2026, they can get profitable. But nonetheless, Tesla is profitable today. And I believe their profitability will only get better in the future. Now, when it comes to how Ford hopes to get profitable and how they're going to do that, besides just uh, manufacturing efficiencies and things that we mentioned earlier, Jim Farley, once again, in that Q4 2022 investors conference call, said, quote, I think we should expect all brands to protect growth when it comes to EV and that or we have to expect negative pricing. And that means software and other items like that becoming even more critical. He went on to say more about this. And he also said, quote, we can make real money on software. I think this is really wise for Ford to move to trying to make more money from the software side of their business and really investing there, because I believe that is where a lot of profit for manufacturers is going to come in the future. Of course, Tesla has that ability with their full self-driving software, and they make quite a bit from that now, but that's especially going to pick up if they are able to achieve full self-driving feature complete and get regulatory approval. Once Tesla can flip that switch, that's going to be a big revenue source for Tesla in the future. And of course, Tesla has other things like enhanced autopilot and premium connectivity, but I believe Tesla will offer more software upgrades in the future. And that is definitely a place where Tesla can make money in the future. And I believe Ford has learned from this. So overall, as you can tell, it appears like Ford is focusing on the right things. And Ford does have a lot of work ahead of them if they're going to catch up to where Tesla is today when it comes to efficiency and profitability. And at the end of the day, by the time they get there, Tesla will be miles ahead of where they are today. Because for instance, Tesla is constantly working to improve their manufacturing processes. There are some rumors out there and there are uh, some people that believe that this Project Highland that we've been hearing about, Tesla's Project Highland, has to do with a lot more than just a Model 3 refresh. It may even be the start of Tesla's next generation of EV manufacturing that would be even more efficient. We don't know the details yet, but nonetheless, we know that Tesla will be further ahead and years to come than they are now. And it appears like Tesla should dominate the EV space for years to come with really the only true competition that I see right now for Tesla being BYD. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I wanna say once again, thank you to Span for sponsoring this video. And also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make these videos possible. A special thank you to my performance supporters and also to the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the video description below. Thank you so much.